Welcome to Cultured Crusaders, where we're going to be going through a journey of time to explore the marvels and mysteries of ancient civilizations and cultures. From the towering pyramids of Egypt to the magnificent temples of Angkor Wat, we will embark on a quest to uncover the secrets of the past and shed light on the cultures that shaped our world. It is one of the most iconic and enigmatic monuments in the world, standing guard over the sands of the Giza Plateau for millennia. The Sphinx of Giza has captured the imaginations of generations, and its ancient stone face has always been shrouded in mystery. This majestic creature has stood the test of time, but what do we really know about the Sphinx? Its origins, its purpose, and even its identity have been the subject of countless debates and hypotheses over the years. Let's dive deeper into this fascinating monument and see what we can uncover. Let's start with what is officially accepted. The Sphinx is located on the Giza Plateau, just outside the bustling city of Cairo. It is believed to have been built during the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, around 2500 BCE. The monument is over 73 meters long and 20 meters tall, making it one of the largest single stone statues in the world. It is also carved from a single block of limestone, weighing approximately 200 tons, and has also been determined that the Sphinx would have taken 100 men approximately three years to build. Despite its massive size and intricate design, the Sphinx is still shrouded in mystery. One of the biggest questions surrounding the Sphinx is its purpose. What was it built for? Was it purely decorative, or did it serve a more practical purpose? There are many theories as to why the Sphinx was built. One theory is that the Sphinx was built as a symbol of royal power and authority. The pharaohs of ancient Egypt were often depicted as powerful godlike figures, and the Sphinx may have been built to reinforce this image. The Sphinx's position in front of the pyramid of Khafre could also indicate that it was built as a protective guardian for the hypothetical tomb. Going further, it suggests that the Sphinx may have been built as a guardian of the pyramids, protecting them from evil spirits and malevolent forces. This theory is supported by the fact that the Sphinx is located at the entrance of the pyramid complex and faces the rising sun, which is believed to have healing properties. Other researchers have suggested that the Sphinx may have been used as a symbolic representation of the Egyptian god Horus, who was associated with the sun and with water. According to this theory, the Sphinx's head may represent the Sun God, while its body represents the Nile, the life-giving river that sustained ancient Egyptian civilization. Whenever we speak of ancient megalithic structures, our current methods of dating depend on the organic material in and around the object that we are trying to date. When it comes to stone, however, it can be very difficult to accurately date because we can't date stone as it doesn't decay the way organic material does. While most experts agree that it was built during the reign of Khafre, some researchers believe that it may be much older. Geological evidence suggests that the Sphinx may have been carved from a natural rock formation that existed long before the reign of Khafre. These natural formations are called yardangs. The research that suggested is much older comes from the way the stars and constellation aligned with the monuments on Earth. One of the most fascinating aspects of the Sphinx is its connection to the constellation of Leo. In ancient Egyptian mythology, the lion was seen as a symbol of power and royalty, and was associated with the sun god Ra. The Sphinx's lion-like body and its location on the Giza Plateau align with the constellation of Leo leading some researchers to suggest that the monument may have been built as a tribute to the celestial lion. It is believed that the ancient Egyptians were highly knowledgeable about astronomy and used celestial alignments to plan their buildings and monuments. The alignment of the Sphinx with Leo may have been used to mark the beginning of the solar year and to celebrate the annual flooding of the Nile River. The Sphinx's position on the eastern side of the plateau would have allowed it to greet the rising sun on the day of the summer solstice which was an important event in the ancient Egyptian calendar. It would make more sense, however, that this ancient civilization would have built the Sphinx to mark a specific time in which this civilization existed. The Sphinx could be up to 10,000 years old, even more, 
predating the Egyptian civilization if you combine the evidence of the pyramids of Giza being aligned with Orion's belt directly above them as a mirror reflection, and the Sphinx being aligned with the constellation of Leo at the horizon during that time period. If that holds true, then everything we think we know about our origin suddenly becomes a matter of great debate. How far back do we actually go? If they existed more than 10,000 years ago, how advanced were they and what happened to them? In almost every culture across the globe, there are flood myths of biblical proportions. Could it be indicative of the actual events that took place? Would it have been the reason why this ancient pre-dynastic civilization was wiped off the face of the planet? And could this explain the massive amounts of water erosion and evidence of flooding at the Giza Plateau? Another factor that points to the Sphinx being much older than we are made to believe is that some researchers suggest that it may have been built during a time when the Giza Plateau was covered in water. Surely, it would have been built before Giza was under water, which would push the date back even further. This theory is supported by the discovery of seashells and marine fossils in the surrounding area, which suggests that the plateau was once submerged. Some researchers have suggested that the Sphinx may have been built during the pre-dynastic period before the rise of the Pharaonic civilization ever existed. However, this theory is not universally accepted, and some experts argue that the erosion patterns on the Sphinx's body could have been caused by wind erosion rather than water erosion. Edgar Cayce was a clairvoyant and was known as the Sleeping Prophet. And in a written account, he claimed he was an ancient priest in Egypt who had direct responsibility in building the Sphinx of Giza. He wrote that the Sphinx was built around 10,300 BC and was directly related to Atlantis. He stated that in an attempt to preserve the history of the Atlanteans, they created a hall of records that is located in a secret room under the right paw of the Sphinx. There have been numerous scans and the results indicate that there are in fact voids under the Sphinx. So what does this all mean? We can all agree that the ancient Egyptians never did anything by chance. Everything was done with extreme care and precision, which only indicates that everything on the Giza Plateau was done with intention. In our conclusion, they created a massive and deliberate time marker for an epoch that dates back to the time of the last ice age, telling us about a time when ancient civilizations existed and that there is far more to our history than what we have been taught. What else are we gonna find in the future? And how will finding it shape us as a civilization? Are we in fact the survivors of a civilization that has been wiped off the planet in a huge cataclysm? If we found evidence, what would our worldview turn into? And how well would we be able to introduce this knowledge to our current reality? There is so much more that we can dive into, and we will, but for now, thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery while we unfold the secrets that are hidden by the sands of time. To all the cultured crusaders out there, until next time.